Erev Tov, Chabri Maim, Steve Benun, you're watching Israeli News Live, and yeah, we're going into another teaching message here. It's the weekend. I know there's a lot of news breaking forth right now, and uh, we're going to be connecting some of those dots for you very soon on what's going on. I promised over and over and over, uh, and I'm seeing things breaking in the news that's going on with all this stuff going on in the political circles. I will come back to that. Uh, and it looks like it'll be towards the end of next week when I can finally get this investigative material together just to give you one part of what might end up becoming a, a complete series. Uh, but at this time right now, we're, we're talking about biblical, uh, biblical things, biblical parables that Yeshua stated. Uh, and right now I'm back in, uh, back, excuse me, back in Matthew chapter 12. And when I say Matthew chapter 12, this is not, you see the title of the video, Jesus connected the dots of the Nephilim in a parable, not in Matthew 12, but you're going to find out in a few minutes exactly where he connected the Nephilim in a parable. I mean, it blew me completely away. Um, and I'm excited about it because it only tells us that the things that God has been revealing to me, trying to share with you, exposing uh, this, this, this devil in this day. Remember, the book of Revelation says that, th that this beast that came, rose up out of the sea had a deadly wound. That wound was healed, and uh, he comes back for that last attack on the true children of God. And uh, so... Uh, I have to kind of back up just a little bit before I move forward here and, and share again with you. As we were going through this beautiful passages here in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 12, I really touched off a lot on verse 30. He that is not with me, Jesus said, is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. And that's exactly what we see. Anytime you see ministers encouraging believers to be placed underneath the authority of Talmudic rabbis, they are not for Jesus Christ. And therefore, they are against him. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. All right, and that's gathering, the, you need to, see, the thing is, ministers, you should be gathering the sheep to Christ. He is the, 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 the shepherd. He is the one that we should bring them to. Not, not the rabbis in Israel, all right? Our desire should be for the rabbis in Israel that God would open the eyes of those that have the, eye, the eyes to see and ears to hear with, right? That's what should be happening there. Not the other way around. Don't take the sheep down to the slaughter. And I say to the slaughter because believe me, they're getting ready to try to start a sacrificial system again. And what are, they, what, what are the rabbis in Israel going to do in a third temple? They want to slaughter the sheep. So is that where you want to take the sheep to? I sure hope not. I mean, come on, friends, let's face it. Wrong thing, wrong idea completely. So if you're, if you're not with Christ, you're against him. And if you are not gathering the sheep to him, you're scattering the sheep abroad. As the scripture says, you, you will cross land and sea to make one proselyte, and you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. It's going to get tough. This is not skim milk, okay? Listen, anyway, yesterday, as, after I had shared this with you, and we got it down, we spoke about it again, where Yeshua says, Jesus says, O generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, right? Then I kept reading down after I got done with the video, and I was like, oh my God. Goodness, why didn't I share this with the people? A good man out of the good treasures of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasures bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. There is a message to the oral law. All those idle words that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. That's the oral law right there. All right, now let's jump over to Matthew chapter 13. Some amazing, amazing insights here. And this is the chapter, and it's going to be something you probably never thought possible, but this is where we connect the dots of the Nephilim. It's where Jesus connected the dots of the Nephilim. 
and he does it in a parable. Now, in verse 3, it says here, He spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. When he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, fowls came and devoured them up. We know about this here. Some fell on the stony places, you know, uh, some, you know, ended up in the briars and some ended up in the good earth. And, we, and he tells this beautiful parable and then he explains it to the apostles because they don't quite get it. All right. But then they actually ask him a question. Okay. And we start with verse 9 here. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. That's a very interesting statement. It's provocative. When Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus Christ, says, Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. It's just like over in the book of Revelation. When the angels would speak, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. Okay? Same thing right here. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. So not everybody has an ear to be able to hear. He can't, he can't say it unless there's some that do have the ability and some that don't. Plain as day. Verse 10, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Now watch closely how Yeshua, Jesus Christ, answers. And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it is not given. It's flat. There's no way to weasel out of this. He says it flat. He says in verse 9, Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. When they ask about why do you speak in parables, he answers them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it is not given. Well, that sounds kind of odd, doesn't it? But if we move on in the same chapter, we'll go ahead and read verse 12. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall it be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parable, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, or the book of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. All right? Watch real closely now, okay? For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Now that's very important as well, and it may not seem like that's important as of yet, but you're going to see why, all right? And he goes on, he says, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower, all right? And let me see if I highlight it. Okay, and he goes, he goes and he explains the parable of the seed how it fell in the different places and what it meant, the stony places, on the good ground, in the, in the briars, etc. But it's when he comes to this next parable he puts forth in verse 24, this is where it gets interesting. And right now we're in Matthew, in the Greek version of the book of Matthew, but we're going to go to the Hebrew version in just a moment. He says in verse 24, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Now we already know that man, already translated by Jesus himself earlier in the same chapter, he says he is that sower. He says, I am the sower. Right? But he goes on to say, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then? Hath it tares? 
All right. He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto them, unto him, Wilt thou then we go and gather them up? But he said, No. Lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather you together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. All right? Now, many people liken this, and we know that what the parable is actually referring to, it is, um, it is referring to the children of God, and of course, the children of the devil. We know this, right? Because he says that the enemy comes in and sows this seed, right? But when you read this in the English language, and even in the Greek, it's very interesting. If you read it in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew Matthew, it's far more interesting. All right. Now I'm actually in the book here of uh, uh, the Hebrew Matthew here, as you can see here on your screen. And what I did to make it a little bit easier, I have actually taken this time around, so you guys would be able to see this clearly on the screen. I photographed the pages and I highlighted those verses so that you guys would be able to see this much easier. All right. Now, this is the Hebrew Matthew, Shem Tov's Hebrew Matthew. It's made from 18 different fragments. And there are, there are 28 fragments of the Hebrew Matthew, though. But this is made from the 18. Now, it says here, It came to pass that when men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed tares over the wheat. That is, Barayiga, and he went away. And it came to pass when the herb grew up to make fruit, he saw the tares. And the servants of the master of the field drew near to him and said to him, Master, did, not, you, did you not sow good seed? Then whence came the tares? And he said to them, My enemy did this. The servants said to him, We will uproot the tares. He said to them, No, lest you uproot the wheat. All right? But here's where it lies at. This is what gets really interesting right here because they didn't even translate this quite correctly. And I was wondering about this when, it's, when I read this because it says, and it, and it came to pass that when men were sleeping. Now I taught on this a little while back and I was assuming that this was after the death of the apostles maybe. No. Not during that time at all. Let's take a look at this on the Hebrew version here in the actual Hebrew language itself. All right? Now, I will follow along with you. Ve'yahi ka'asher b'nei adam yishnim. Yishnim. Okay? And, and it was that when the sons of Adam were sleeping, all right? When they were sleeping, Bo so ano vezra al hachatim. All right, then came, then comes, or comes my enemy, or you know, his enemy, and his seed was put upon the wheat. This gets interesting. All right, very interesting. Because now we're talking about the sons of Adam when they were sleeping. The enemy comes in, right? Right here, the enemy comes in. He comes, the enemy, and his seed is put upon the wheat. The wheat has always represented the true believers. All right. Now, I'll show that part is right in English. Okay. See, so watch. And his enemy came and sowed tares. They put on there over the wheat. It's actually on the wheat. They sowed the tares. All right. And the word tares is not in there. It, it just simply says it doesn't say tares. It didn't say he came and sowed tares. It said the enemy came. And his seed was put upon the wheat. Let that soak for a minute. And when did that happen? 
while the sons of Adam were sleeping. Now, you got to look at something here to really catch this. All right, and I'm going to kind of go slow. I want it to sink in. I want you to really catch where we're going at here now. Let's go back over here just to the, to the English version of Matthew 13 or the Greek version. He puts forth another parable. Okay. Uh, actually, before we do that, back up here. All right. The notice right here, for verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. All right? What is it? Now, we could argue that this represents the fact that Christ had not come yet, so therefore they had not heard. But still, until Christ come and place the Holy Spirit within his people, we are basically asleep. And in fact, not only that, everyone that, that was born since the time of Adam until Christ came to bring about the resurrection have slept. We always hear that same expression. They slept with their fathers. That's what it's speaking about right here. That many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them. Why? They sleep. They are sleeping in the earth until Christ came and at his death, burial, and resurrection, then they arose with him and they were awakened. So until that time, what were they doing? They were sleeping. Now, if you look at the Hebrew Matthew, and we go up here to verse 19, let me see if this is actually in this one here. Okay, when, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, okay, understand not, then cometh the wicked one. Okay, so he doesn't, he doesn't express it here in the Greek Matthew, but in the Hebrew Matthew, he starts it off, the sower is the son of man. And that's something we don't have in the Greek. The sower is the son of man. And the seed which fell on the road is everyone who hears the kingdom of heaven. Now he's just explaining that. And I had to bring that back up though, because we have to realize, even though he goes into that second parable, it still refers to Jesus Christ as the sower. All right, so let's back back up over here. And it came to pass when the men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed tares. All right, let's back up to verse 24. He said before them another parable, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sows good seed in his field. Who's the good sower? According to the Hebrew Matthew, it's Jesus, the son of, is, the, is the sower. The son of man is that good sower, right? It came to pass when the men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed tares over the wheat. All right, they sowed the tares over the wheat, but it's not just the sowing. You have to understand, according to the Hebrew Matthew, they don't even translate the English correctly there because why? They didn't have the revelation to be able to translate this, right? Again, I'll say it again for you guys. Bene Adam Yashnaim. All right, what is it? The sons of Adam, while they're sleeping, the sons of Adam, not just while man sleeping, but the sons of Adam while they slept. What? Now I think that's a spiritual sleep. Bo, okay, then comes the enemy and his seed. Ve yazara al hachatim. He puts his seed upon the wheat. The wheat were the daughters or the sons of Adam. Excuse me, the daughters of Adam. He placed that seed upon the daughters of Adam. That is the connection of the Nephilim. Yeshua, in a parable in the Hebrew language, was clearly showing that while the sons of Adam were asleep, not realizing, they didn't have the spiritual insight to realize what these fallen angels were doing, that Satan came in and he sowed his seed among the wheat. You understand now? Oh my goodness. Listen, I got it right here. This is the one that I told you, just an amazing book right here. I've got a lot of the volumes for the Dead Sea Scrolls right there. I, I got to share with you because I want to deal with this right now as well. This is from the book of Genesis, all right? Here it is right here. And again, I, I'm bringing this up because if you go, let me, let me take you first real quick to Genesis, all right? If we were to go to Genesis chapter 6, right? And you read in chapter 6 there about, um, okay, in verse 4, in the, in the one that I use online, it says Nephilim. But in, in the King James Version, it says the giant. And there were giants in the earth in those days. 
And also after that, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, the same were the mighty men that were of old, the men of renown. Now notice, it calls them sons of God. Bene Elohim el banot ha'adam. He came to the daughters of Adam. All right? And some people say, well, sons of God are not the fallen angels. One, we have to realize, this is an incorrect uh, translation. It should be Nephilim, okay? Because it doesn't say Nephilim here. It says, get rid of the vowels. Get rid of the Talmudic idea that they, they try to corrupt the scriptures with. It says here, the fallen, they were in the earth, okay? In those days, Be'yamim Ha'em, they were in the earth in those days, and also afterwards, okay, Achrekin Asha, Yavu Bene Elohim. Then came the sons of God unto the daughters of Adam, all right, and they did what? They bore children to them, all right? Oh my goodness, friend, this is what blows me away. Here, here it's written in Genesis. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to first prove to you, and just to, well, before I do it, I want to first show you something. I'll come back to the second. Again, let's go back to that Hebrew again in Matthew. And what is it? While the sons of Adam are asleep. I mean, I looked at that as being spiritually. It might have been at nighttime while they were sleeping in their beds for all I know. But nonetheless, while they slept, the enemy came and sowed his seed upon the wheat, the wheat being the daughters. Okay? Because why? The wheat represents the believers. So the enemy comes and sowed his seed, and that happened while the sons of Adam were asleep. All right? Now let's go back. I know I got to keep going back and forth on that, right? So I said, as I show you, the Nephilim, the fallen angels were in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men. Now the big argument is, well, the sons of God are not the fallen angels. Okay. Not according to the Dead Sea Scrolls. All right. This here is in the book of Genesis, fragment, cave number one, 1Q20. This is part of the book of Genesis. They call it the Genesis Apocryphon. And the only reason they call it Apocryphon because it looks a lot like our Genesis, but yet they talk a little bit about what you see in the book of uh, Enoch. In this case here, it's all dealing with what happened with, with Noah. Okay? And his father, Lamech, is worried that he is actually of the sons of or are from the fallen angels. He's worried about that because his countenance is so much different. This is actually written in the Dead Sea Scrolls in their, in their book of Genesis. All right? Now, right here that I have highlighted in yellow, and let me blow this up for you guys. I want you to really be able to see this. I'm going to make this one big for you guys there to see on the screen. All right? He says here, he's not from the sons of heaven. Whoa. So fallen angels are considered sons of heaven? What do you know? Velo min shemain. It's exactly what it says. All right? Because he's trying to calm him down. He's trying to calm Lamech down that he's not. So the message is sent back to Lamech to let him know, don't worry, your wife didn't cheat on you. It's your son. All right? The English version, just so you can see it. Here we go. Okay? And I'll blow it up big and we'll just kind of go over slowly. Go say to Lamech, your son, we're on the second line right here, the child is truly from you and not from the sons of heaven. What do you know? What do you know? The Dead Sea Scrolls refers to the fallen angels as the sons of heaven. What do you know? That's a new one, isn't it? Well, maybe after all then, in our book of Genesis, when it says that the Nephilim were there in the earth in the days, in those days, and also after this, I'm, I'm looking at the Hebrew, just translating it myself, literally. Uh, also, this was, was coming, the sons of God, to the daughters of Adam, and they birthed children. 
unto them. What do you know? And then Jesus comes over here in this amazing parable, right? Amazing parable that Jesus comes and he says to us when he's giving us this new parable, and while the sons of Adam, let me blow this one up for you too, because maybe some of you guys can read this, sisters, whatever. I know I got some sisters that could. All right. All right. And it was at this time that the sons of Adam slept and came in his enemy. Jesus is talking about his enemy. See, he says it down here too. Amalechem shoni asav zeh. Okay, because he's talking there. He says, and he says to them, my enemy has done this. This is, what, this is what Jesus literally says in Hebrew. He says to his apostles when they wanted to go uproot the wheat, uh, the tares, he says, my, he said to them, my enemy did this. Singular. My enemy. And when it says up here, while the sons of Adam were asleep, then crept in his enemy. And he put his, not his seed, but put, yeah, he put the seed upon the wheat. There it is right there. It's, it's laying right in a parable. And I, and I never saw this myself. Never saw it before. I don't know how much that's a blessing to you guys. I, I hope it's not more confusing for you but to me it is absolutely amazing absolutely amazing another parable this is the greek part he put forth into them the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man which sowed good seed in his field but while men slept in this case the sons of adam his enemy came and sowed tares not among the wheat on the wheat, on the wheat, and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Hmm. More children popped up than what they were anticipating. So the servants of the household came and said unto the sir, Did thou not sow good seed in your field? And from whence then at the tares? And he said unto them, An enemy. He, did, he didn't say an enemy in Hebrew. He says, my enemy have done this. Not an enemy. My enemy did this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together into the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather together first the tares. Bind them in bundles to burn them but gather the wheat into my barn. Now, that's one thing we got to, I want to clarify something with you. You notice what he said to do here? Gather you together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. He promised he would never destroy the earth again with water. But that's what he did back during Noah's day. He took and destroyed all of those children of the fallen angels. There is no place of repentance for their souls. So in this case here, we know that he's going to destroy the earth, earth this time, not with water, but with fire. So he says, gather them together in bundles to burn them. Isn't it interesting? Another judgment. I don't know about you, friends, but more and more God is bringing things to light in this day. We thank you for your support of this ministry. We thank you for watching. We thank you for your prayers. And, and by the way, I did start re-entering in the addresses and stuff. So hopefully in the next couple of days, John has got the, the, the letter to go, ready to go out to you guys that we have your addresses for. Uh, it'll also be posted on Patreon very soon as well. Uh, but as soon as I can finish entering these addresses, get them caught back up where I was at, uh, we will get those out to you in the mail. Uh, so thank you for those of you that support us uh, by mail. And you, if you would like to do that, if God places that on your heart to be a support to this ministry, our address right here below the screen. And uh, we thank you for that. And, and of course, we do ask you, please pray for this ministry. A lot goes on. A lot goes on in behind the scenes.
anyway, pray for my family as well. Uh, a lot of things are going on in our family too, just trying to, um, is Satan trying to hit every way he can physically in the family. So we do ask your prayers as well for the family. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you for watching. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Don't forget IsraeliNewsLive.org. All that information is in the description below for you as well, too, if God lays anything upon your heart in helping out with the work we do. We do thank you for your kindness. Shalom. In a world of anger.